Hi, and welcome to Breaking Trees, a show where we give you the inside scoop of some pretty cool video game stuff. This week, Anita Sarkeesian releases a new video on feminism in gaming. Will Reddit have an aneurysm? Then, free-to-play games are stealing your personal data because you're letting them do it. It's the thing you kind of knew all along, but never really thought about. To cover these breaking topics, I'm joined with my co-anchor Ryan, who will not be featured until the next cut because we only have one camera. You weren't supposed to tell him that, man. Well, I just... We'll do... <laughs> Let's just get to the feminism and gaming story. Anita Sarkeesian, in her latest video, covered the oh-so-popular topic of sexy, downloadable content. This came on the heels of another video, released just a couple of weeks before, on basically the same topic, thus breaking her previous record by releasing two whole videos in the span of a month. Wow, that $159,000 budget's really cranking them out. Well, good research can take time, so let's not be too hard on her. What does Anita actually say about these wonderful mods that leave us all with a satisfying half-chub? When games offer hypersexualized DLC outfits for players to buy, publishers and developers are telling presumed straight male players, yes, these women do indeed exist primarily as toys to fulfill your personal sexual fantasy. And why does sexism sell? Well, because it's not challenging dominant paradigms. It's simply reinforcing ideas about male privilege and entitlement to women's sexuality that are already entrenched in the cultural zeitgeist. But, boobs, what doesn't Anita understand about this? Essentially, she's saying that by allowing young men to ogle at scantily clad female characters for a nominal fee, we're reinforcing an idea that objectifies women and leaves men with a skewed concept of sex and the female gender as a whole. Ryan, do you agree with all of this? That content like this ultimately makes men care more about women's bodies than their personalities? Uh, I do think this is kind of a problem. How big of one, I'm not quite sure. I think Anita's overblowing things a bit, but I don't think there's anything wrong with enjoying the soothing sights of an attractive digital woman in moderation. But it's possible that these sexy mods are too prevalent. For instance, in many of Anita's videos, she laments the fact that there are very few great female protagonists. And even when women are given a lead role, such as in Final Fantasy XIII 2, they're accompanied by an available nudie DLC. All the trials and tribulations that a fictional woman goes through are then filtered through the idea that she's really fucking hot. And it's difficult to think of nearly as many scantily clad men compared to their female counterparts, until you remember Astaroth, who may just close that divide single-handedly. True that. But what do you say to the argument that most of these games are marketed towards men? Of course these games are gonna capitalize on sexy girls. It sells! This could just be a sign that most men like looking at attractive women, just like most women like looking at attractive men. That's part of it, definitely. Again, I don't think there's anything wrong with appreciating the female body, but let's take a look at the context of our society as a whole. Just looking at movies, the vast majority of the protagonists are male, whereas the women are just kind of... There, men are constantly rewarded for their bravery, intelligence, and charm, whereas women are rewarded for their physical beauty. So I guess when you look at these countless sexualized mods in the context of a society where women's personalities aren't seen as very important, it's easier to see Anita's point. That being said, I don't want these sexy mods to go away. They have their place. Personally, I think the answer is to increase the prevalence of well-written, genuinely fantastic female characters in all forms of entertainment, while raising awareness for people to curb their own consumption of super-sexualized content. But even so, you've got to be careful. It's like watching porn all the time, people. Don't overdo that shit. I mean, come on. Being slightly aroused during scenes meant to invoke intense emotions could easily take away from the cinematic splendor meant to blow your mind and give you goosebumps. Half chubs are overrated anyways. Plus, consuming too much of these attractive 2D women can lead to some pretty weird stuff in extreme cases. Yeah, let's keep that under control, guys. And with that, I think we've wrapped up that story. So we're curious to what you guys think about Anita's video as well as our interpretation, so please let us know in the comments section below. But now it's time to move on to an even more urgent topic. 
are mobile developers stealing your personal information. Yes. Yes, they are. An anonymous source who claims to have worked all over the mobile games industry confessed in a masturbatory tone that free-to-play games are as free as those drugs that homeless guy offered you. Allegedly, the basic idea is to reel people in with free content and then coax them into in-app purchases, known more commonly as IAPs. Nowadays, a huge deciding factor for whether or not your data is mined depends on your answer to one simple question. Would you like to connect with Facebook? And from there, most anything they could possibly want to know is handed to them on a silver platter. Yep, and even putting fake information on Facebook doesn't shield you from these sneaky developers. So for those of you who are currently residing in Cuntington Beach, even you aren't safe. Because with just your profile, they can find where your friends live, what their interests are, where they go to college, etc, etc. And from that, they can automatically assume some incredibly accurate things about you. And that's not all. According to the anonymous source, If you are a whale, we take Facebook stalking to a whole new level. You spend enough money, we will friend you. Not officially, but with a fake account. Maybe it's a hot girl who shows too much cleavage. That's us. We learned as much before friending you, but once you let us in, we have the keys to the kingdom. So you mean, Stacy didn't actually want to be a part of my life? THOSE BASTARDS! Well, it's good to know there's at least one way to stop these guys. The anonymous source claims that by actually spending money on content, you'll greatly decrease the incentive to mine data and push ads onto you. My question though is, is this actually a bad thing? Well, it's bad in the sense that you don't know exactly what they know about you. And it's certainly bad that they've done all of this under the table. But then again, we are getting free content because of it. And if you end up buying something from an ad, does that make it worth it? Maybe being a cheap bastard isn't the end of the world. What's crazy is the sheer volume to which this phenomena has spread. Our anonymous semi-douche boasts, We keep everything we can, and we are not alone. Normally I implement 20 to 30 different third-party SDKs into a game. Worse yet, they are all networked. Let's say you're in some app that wants to know if you are male or female, and what age you fall under. Well that app shares that data with its ad network. Guess who else uses that same ad network? We do. Now we have that data, without even asking for it. Indeed, it appears there's an entire market behind the scenes dedicated exclusively to corporate fuckery. And the only way to stop it is to actually purchase games that cost money. So it's time to ask yourself, is free content worth trading for your privacy? And maybe, just maybe it's time to start actually reading those terms and conditions that we always skip over. <laughs> oh man. Oh, but on a more serious note, we're pretty interested in what you guys think about this matter. So please let us know in the comments section below how you feel about these developers using our personal information for those free to play apps. And as always, thanks for watching. And we love you all. Dude, why are you making out with your waifu when you could be watching a stream on YouTube Gaming? What stream? Our stream on YouTube Gaming. We have a stream on YouTube Gaming? Yeah, we stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 1pm and every Saturday morning at 11am. Can she come? Of course, just follow us at Treeschool Team on Twitter to get all of our updates. Everyone can bring their waifu. Yeah!